Hey, what's going on? Test, test. Let's see what's... Started this a little bit later today. Wanted to do it generally around like real lunchtime, like around like 12, 1, what most people call their lunchtime. But you know what? A lot of people take late lunches. So let's say it still, it still counts. Okay. So uh, anyway, how's everybody doing? How's everybody feeling? Uh, you know the routine. Com share, comment, like, subscribe. Share, comment, like, subscribe. Gonna give a shout out to. Actually, you know what? I'm not gonna shout out this episode onto Twitter because right now, I don't know, there's a lot of trolls out there right now. And I feel like if I shout it out on Twitter, it's gonna, it's gonna be a, at least live, this is gonna be an invitation to just have a bunch of live trolls pop in. Like a lot of these uh, concern troll types because of the whole protesting in Minneapolis, a lot of, and it's like, some of them seem to be like class reductionist types, like, you know, those weird white leftists. And some of them seem to be right-wing reactionary. But to be honest, there's a major horseshoe kind of going on with both those types where they both kind of look the same anyway. They both have weird, ironic accounts with anime or weird things and layers of irony and obfuscation on the profile. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter who they are. I mean, at the end of the day, they're not really that different anyway. I think um, a lot of these types, if they got the type of one or two things they wanted, which is like student loan forgiveness or universal health care, they would jump full fledge into the alt right. Like, I think they're only being kind of tethered to leftism. Uh, on one or two issues. Hey, Michael R. Jackson, what's going on? Uh, so everyone, we have a, a Pulitzer, Pulitzer Prize winner in the chat. <laughs> As of, yeah, um, Champagne Sharks, Champagne Sharks guest and playwright behind um, Strange Loop. And yeah, glad, glad you can make a live one. Um, yeah, this. I had a bunch of stuff I wanted to talk about, right? And I had stuff I wanted to talk about today. But then when this morning happened and all the writing happened, well, I mean, the writing had been going on. That's one of the things that I wanted to talk about was the writing. But so so much crazy stuff was going on uh, this morning with, and this is why Twitter is so terrible and social media is so terrible. It's like, I feel like, there's a lot of people who just are waiting in the wings. They're bored, they're alienated, they're detached, they're isolated, and coronavirus is making that worse. But there's a lot of people that when a crisis happens, it's like their call to arms to be obnoxious and to, and half of them are like trolls, like people who just want to see people suffering or upset or whatever, and then just go into their mentions and say, you know, the most heinous or tone deaf things, you know, or concern troll or, you know, just asking questions or to be outright ghouls, you know, and mock the dead. But then there's also people who are supposedly on the other side of the divide and who are supposed to be our social justice types or activists. And they're really just low key trolls themselves. And a lot of times these people live to fight with each other because they're both flip sides of the same coin, you know? So they're both exist to kind of troll each other, really, you know? It's, um, it's awful. It's, it's just an awful scene. It's an awful, awful scene. And um, so it's like in addition to that type of stuff, right? That is um, what you would expect. We've had, I just want to find, I just want to find it real quick. Actually, here's, here's something I want to talk about real quick. Uh, 
this this John this John Boyega thing that happened. I think it's nice what happened. Like you know, John Boyega. John Boyega was talking about um, racism and stuff, and I think it was I think it was nice what he said. But I'm telling you, people are throwing way too many extras on it to a point where it's kind of a sad commentary in in and of itself. Um, and and this this is what this is what he said. And he said this. Any racist shit that's straight up. Any racist shit that's straight up. Block. It's fine. It's ready. Don't need you on my page. And if you're a fan of me and you support my work and you're racist and you're arguing with what I was saying, fuck off, you fucking dickheads. Yeah? So I straight up like that. That's how it's going to go. And throughout my whole career as an actor, I want to let you guys know this. I'm not the guy. I'm not Hollywood. I never, ever left the UK to go and live in LA for over a year. I never did. I'm from London. I'm from here. We have different fucking rules. We're real. We speak truth. Where are, where are, where are emotions on the wrist? I'm also African. So stop taking a piss from any racist shit. So you know what? A lot of people are kind of giving him props. And I tried to give him some props. But this was some problems with what he said. Right? Um, like he says... What what made he says I'm not I'm not Hollywood. Even three Star Wars movie, you're you're Hollywood. But um what he says is F off racist. I'm African. Okay, so who wanted to say I'm black? You know, but he says I'm not with the shits. I'm from London. I'm African. I think whether he meant to or not, it's a little bit of a low key jab against like black actors in Hollywood who have been talking about racism at the risk of their careers for like a long time, you know, and African Americans. Like, you know, I feel like a lot of people are kind of rushing to give him props for this. And I tried to give him, when I found out when I found out this this was supposedly in response to what happened with George Floyd and I was like, okay, maybe I'm too hard hard on them. But then when I listened to it, and but it's, there's different things. I, I'm, I'm gonna play certain things and just just stop them and stuff. Okay, so shit, that's straight up block. It's fine. It's ready. Don't need. So he's just acting really gangster with it, like you know, it's ready, whatever. Okay, we know, you know, whatever. You on my page, and if you're a fan of me and you support my work and you're racist. <laughs> And you're arguing with what I was saying? Fuck off, you fucking dickheads. Yeah? So I straight up like that. That's how it's gonna go. And throughout my whole career as an actor, I wanna let you guys know this. Now, this is the part that I think is interesting. So, you know, I front my whole career as an actor. And then a lot of people were throwing extras on it, you know, saying, wow, he's putting his whole uh, career at risk. And I'm like, if something like this, this basic, is throwing your whole career at risk, that's more an indictment of Hollywood and the entertainment industry than a testament to how strong you are, you know, because saying, hey, I don't like racists, it should be like the most basic thing. It shouldn't be something that's so, um, like, we live in this bare minimum society where just the bare minimum, especially if it's somebody famous, because we waste so much emphasis on clout and fame now that that's the biggest thing that you can risk now you know like um if he was a regular joe risking his life as an activist that would impress people less than him having millions of followers and risking ten thousand followers you know um like he has no he hates when people distinguish when black americans distinguish themselves from Africans or something for, for anything, you know? So when it, when it's time for Sam Jackson or Spike Lee to say something about, um, say something about how there's something unique about the black American experience, he's always like, oh, oh, um, 
this is divisive bullshit. It's just stupid. You know, he uses words against them like stupid or or it's his ass. Like, like he's really disrespectful to them, right? And these are the people who paved the way for him to work in this industry in America. Because people like him and Chris Jumbo and all the other people keep complaining that, that they can't get work in the UK. That they have to come to America. Well, why can you come to America? Because people like Sam Jackson and Spike Lee and all these people beat down doors for you and people before them. You know, and, um, you know, for you to come in and be disrespectful to them and say, hey, how dare you differentiate yourself as, as special, you know, when and he's talking all this mess about, you know, I'm from the UK, I'm African and all this stuff. But it's like, so don't get it twisted that, you know, I'm willing to, to, to speak out first in addition to it being like, I think, a low key kind of dig to um the black people already in Hollywood and traditionally in Hollywood, um, and also African Americans, also African Americans, you guys have not been speaking out against the racism in the UK that much. You guys have been just kind of fleeing the UK to come here to America and make your mark here, where the groundwork has already been laid by yet the, the, the black people. And someone said this in the chat. I caught that. He's done that before, and he hates that the other way around, you know? Yeah, so, 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 I haven't seen this thing about insecure black English versus black American English, but yeah, I mean, that that's, that's basically, that's basically my big comment. That's basically um, my big comment. Like, like uh, American people, American black people, could be way too forgiving sometimes. So I saw so many people just rushing to kind of rehabilitate him. And like I said, I'm glad that he did it for George Floyd. I'm glad, you know, that he said something. He could have said nothing, but I'm not willing to just roll out the red carpet for him for him yet, you know? Uh, and so these black Brits free from their homeland, so the UK, and lose out on acting jobs due to white British bias and run again to the US to wear the garb that our people fight for here. You know, you know, and, and so so it's like um I'm in no rush to like roll, roll out the red carpet for this guy, but you know, the whole I'm African, I'm not Hollywood and all this stuff. And it's like Hollywood people have been speaking out about this stuff and will continue to speak out about this stuff and their tendency to speak out about this stuff and and risk their careers is whole, the whole reason why you had to come here to work instead of working over there, you know? Sorry, hungry. So yeah, him, and everyone talking about, oh, he's so risky. I mean, if this is what's really risking your career and you even think that, that you think this is a big risk to your career, this is going to show just how sad um, Hollywood is, you know? Um, yeah, I, I just thought it was a little bit, a little bit too much. And end of the show, uh, Henrietta Snack said he put his career on the line for telling racist people to get the fuck off his social media. Not saying you are wrong, but that is a very sad commentary on the entertainment industry. And, and I agree. It's, uh, I think it's more sad about the entertainment industry than um, whatever. But yeah, I just didn't really like that. He always does that. He gets mad at you know when African Americans dare to differentiate themselves from anyone else in the diaspora. But he has a production company, and his production company he has no problems, you know, saying that his production company is geared toward building. Um, acting opportunities and directing opportunities for Africans. He, he specifies Africans, he specifies Nigerians all the time, he specifies British people all the time. And um, yeah, so, I mean, come on. It, it, it's, I'm not really, I'm not rolling out the red carpet for this guy. It's, 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 it's nice for what it is, but you haven't balanced the scales yet. And even the stuff in this is, it's just okay. Like. We just have to stop. We have to stop doing that. We really do. 
uh, just rushing to praise bare minimum shit, you know? Um, yeah, uh, Yakub said it's like the thing you mentioned about being dependent and resenting that you're dependent. Um, yeah, in, psych in psychology, that's called hostile dependency. When you um, are dependent on somebody, but you resent that you're dependent on them, and um, you end up channeling with this type of hostility toward the people that you're dependent on, you know? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, he said this stuff, and then um, I said I'm not really convinced, you know, because I just assumed the worst, but then um, a friend of the show, Andre, was like, no, you know, he's making steps in the right direction, and, you know, we have to cut him some slack and give him room to grow, and, you know, and then I found out that he, um, I found out that he was talking about George Floyd, so I said, oh, Okay, so I deleted the, the negative stuff I said about him. I said, you know, I don't think this balances the scales, but, you know, I'm glad that he did this for George Floyd and that it wasn't because some Raylos got mad at him because he's gotten mad about racism before, but, you know, over, like, dumb stuff like like Raylos, people who are shippers for Kylo Ren and, and Rey in Star Wars were, like, saying racist stuff in his mentions, stuff, stuff like that, you know? I was like, I eh. You know, I'm so like, at least it wasn't that. But then I actually listened to the actual words he said, and I was like, man, I take it back. I'm I'm back on a skeptical train. I, and um, he's got a ways to go. He didn't have to say, you know, I'm not Hollywood. You know, I'm I'm African. I'm I'm London. It was like, yo, come on. So he's saying like like London Africans are more not with the shits when it comes to racism than um. African Americans, even Hollywood African Americans, when all of y'all straight up admit the reason you come here is because um, all the groundwork has been laid laid here for you. Like that's 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 a corny look to me. That's a corny look to me. I, I don't I don't like that. Um, and like. This is, and they tell the truth on themselves all the time, these people. And I've gotten into it with uh, John Boyega online before because one thing I hate is uh, British black actors say out of pocket stuff about Americans and American actors all the time. <laughs> all the time. And um, he never weighs in on weird out of pocket stuff they say, but as soon as any black American actor says anything, uh, he starts he starts uh, policing the tone. He starts tone policing them, right? But um, and he did it with Spike Lee. He did it with, um, but 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 check check this out, right? David Harewood, Spike Lee did a scene with um, black, the, a black woman and a British uh, black person in his show, She's Gotta Have It. And he put real dialogue from different, um, from different interviews and things that have really been said. Like, like Spike Lee based the thing on reality. And Spike Lee, ironically, is one of the people who was kind of caping for, let's not be divisive um, when it comes to diaspora of blacks in Hollywood. But I think after a while, in interviews, he was saying that stuff. Or I think after a while, I guess, we saw a discourse around it. Uh, he got kind of sick, and he he included stuff that included this interview in the discussion, right? So David Harewood says black British actors may be better suited to American roles. So he basically said black British actors are actually better suited to play black Americans than uh, black Americans, right? Um, he says UK actors may be more may be more able to easily unshackle ourselves from the burdens of racial realities, right? So the Homeland actor, David Harewood, has stepped into controversy over black British actors playing African-American roles, arguing that Britons may be better suited to some parts because they are not burdened by, quote unquote, what's in the history books. This is quote, like what's in the history books, you know, burdens African-Americans, but it doesn't burden them. So in an article for Guardian, Birmingham born Harewood writes that it's perhaps because they are not quote unquote real American brothers. Uh, and he, he was paraphrasing kind of snarkily um, 
what Sam Jackson said, said, yeah, he's talking about real American brothers, but maybe it's because we aren't quote unquote real American brothers that he and other black British actors are able to quote unquote, to unshackle ourselves from the burden of racial realities and simply play what's on the page. So, so what, what he's saying here is, um, black American actors are so emotional and burdened by uh, what's in the history books, his actual words, that they can't simply play what's on the page. Like, like they can't just act. Like, you know, they just go in there and then they, um, you know, start reading a script or so, oh, whitey, you know, and then they just, they just, uh, there's just a cut, like, you know, you know, this is, this is a uh, kindergarten cop three. What, what, what are you doing, Leroy? You know? Um, yeah, so, yeah, it, it's, 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 uh, stupid. Like, if you're an actor, you're a professional, and, and we have, we have black American actors who've trained in Juilliard, who've trained in Harvard, Yale, conservatories, all this stuff. Yeah, it's not, it's not the hardest thing in the world, you know, um, uh, like this idea that what, Black people just uh, come up through stand-up comedy or or rappers or like like they're as trained as you like like it's and also they have like the practice like you know it's not like we've never seen a black actor produce tears on on command or play a happy person or play a slave you know like it's or play a comedy like it's really it's really insulting right and um. And then he, so oh, hold on, I just want to go a little, um, this is what he says, he says, Harewood scoffs at the idea that the motivation was financial, that uh, you can pay black actors less. He goes, the idea that American producers and directors are choosing black British talent to save themselves a buck or two is ridiculous. It's because we're damn good. You know, um, and and yeah, I just found that kind of um, tacky, right? But th what's interesting is Spike Lee included some of that interview and put it into the voice of the British character on on what he was doing, which she, which she's she's got to have it, right? So then. Um, Boyega goes on Twitter and calls Spike Lee in the scene trash. He uses the word trash, which is highly out of pocket. You know, you can disagree with him, but you don't have to talk to an icon of Black Hollywood like that and call him um, call him trash. And I see a lot of the stuff that these people do that's supposed to be so good. Like um, in that in that movie Queen and Slim, the accents are horrible, and it's, and. The weird thing is a lot of black American people put way too much extras on it, too. Like, I see black American people say, oh, my God, I can't believe Idris Elba's accent. And Idris Elba's accent slips 24-7. I don't want to go into Idris Elba too much because he doesn't say out-of-pocket stuff like this. He's he's cool people. But I feel like we have kind of a low self-esteem, um, American people, where we just automatically kind of elevate things with a British accent. So, you know, I like, like Queen and Slim, they talk with that clipped British um, way of talking, and American people kind of stretch out their vowels, you know, and they don't really have that. They're kind of cosplaying as Americans, and it wasn't really, uh, um, yeah. When people say stuff like this because there's a lag, I don't really know what they're talking about. So I'm not really sure what you're talking about. That's really a good point, but uh, I'm curious because I, I like to build on stuff like that. But um Danny Newton says something similar. I remember saying she said she didn't want to play a maid or the help in Britain. That's why she's in Hollywood. She she straight up uh, said that. But this this is what yeah and this is true like the the, the British historical educational reputation, you know, but if you look at the pedigrees of a lot of black actors, they have pretty good pedigrees. Like 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 they're not just like, you know, the did Def Comedy Jam for like five years and then uh, probably later into acting. Like, like there's a lot of different routes that black American actors take, but 
when John Boyega called it trash, right? And I, I went at John Boyega online because I was like, why is it every time a black American person in Hollywood says something, you have to come up with stupid trash, whatever. But when David Harewood said what he said, and that dialogue was in that scene you're calling trash, where is your stuff calling David Harewood trash? Like one thing I hate in real life, and there's people like this, you ever know somebody that they concern troll you or you, you get into arguments with people and they always come out to um, poo poo you or tone police you. But then you're like, why are you only coming out with me? But that dude was saying trash for like five hours. Like, but the person's like, like, no, no, we should all stop fighting, whatever. And it's like, why is it only we should all stop fighting when I say something back? But when both of us were talking, when the other guy was talking, you weren't saying shit. And they'll say stuff like, oh, but I didn't see when they did that. You know, like, there's like people do that online. There's people do that in, in real life, you know, who always, who always uh, have something to say when, have something to say when, um, you're speaking up and because low key, they're really checking the other person's side. It's like a fake both sides thing. So every time uh, John Brega comes in, he calls Sam Jackson's comment stupid or calls Spike Lee trash. And he always adds in that we don't have time for this silly division or this silly uh, whatever. But but um, when David Harewood is saying something, reading something out of pocket and his words were actually what was in Spike Lee's thing. Spike Lee was partially responding to him. That character was saying stuff that um, real British actors have said. He's quiet as a church mouse. Like, you know, I would rather Boyega's came in and with both guns blazing and said, you know what, F you, we think we're better, whatever. But I hate his whole fake talking down and kumbaya thing, you know, oh, it's, it's about divisiveness or whatever. Then he comes back and keeps um, saying, so like, uh, I'm gonna put someone someone else. This is someone else whose words kind of ended ended up being right. So British TV and film industry quote unquote pulls plug on black actors, says Chris Jumbo. Uh Jumbo speaking to labor arts diversity inquiry, and this is um some white people in, in English she's talking to, says she often hit the exotic best friend ceiling. So in British stuff, she just plays the exotic best friend, which is true. I've seen, damn it, this was not um, a wall before, but now it is. Um, damn it, hold on. I'm going to find another place to read this. But. She said it in other places, so it shouldn't be hard. Yeah, more and more places are getting uh, paywalled. So peep, so peep this. Check this out. Jumbo says black UK stars win US roles because quote unquote, we are better, right? Um, the Good Fight star says, the reason I'm doing so well is our training comma, our work ethic, we learn our lines. That is super disrespectful. She basically, she basically said, um, we do better because uh, we learn, we learn our lines. Like, do you know what a spit in the face that is to black American actors? So basically, you're speaking in front of a bunch of white people. You're speaking in front of a bunch of white people and you're confirming to those white people in England, negative stereotypes about African Americans, right? And basically holding yourself up as a special snowflake, a special kind of black person, right? Um, that's what makes it even worse is that she was not even saying this to, she's not even saying this to other black people. She's saying this to um, black British people. I'm sorry, white, white British people, seeing this white British people. So she goes, um, the reason I'm doing so well is our training, our work ethic. We learn our lines. Why are we, and she means we as in Britain, not trying to keep that here and tell the whole world that we are the best rather than letting people slip through the net? Jumbo was speaking to a Labour Party inquiry into access and diversity. She said she would love to find a job in Britain, 
but has had to take roles in the USA because there is more work on offer across the pond. Now, I want you to peep the dynamic here and and think think about this. Think about what she's trying to say here, right? Um, she's talking to white British people. And instead of taking the fight to them, and criticizing them, like, you know, she could say this. We are as talented as we are as talented as actors, black actors in America, but the white people in America are, while not perfect, they're more willing, they're more willing to um, at least give us a chance. Whereas you guys are so close-minded and racist, you won't give us a chance. Instead, she makes it down to this is about your inability to view good talent. You know, like, um, and we're really good. And the white American people hiring um, have been ha have been forced to put up with substandard talent. They're so open-minded that they've been willing to put up with substandard talent. And we're so talented that people from across the pond are coming to get us, you know? So you need to uh, realize how good we are. So it's kind of like a begging for jobs, making it about like, so it's it's not only a low blow to American actors, but it's also kind of sparing, it's kind of sparing, um, it's sparing the white people. You're over crediting the white American people because you're making it seem like the white American people just are so open-minded and stuff and you know, no, the white American people hire more black people because black people fought for those gains. You know, it's not because they're great people or the star or they're just so gracious. They just want to hire black people like crazy. And they have been so eager to hire black people that they've been willing to put up with substandard black Americans who can't learn their lines. And, you know, we're so like basically everyone is getting credit for this dynamic, except the actual black American actors. Everyone, everyone, and one of the ironic things about what David Harewood said is he also said we need to get hired because we're better, but he didn't actually realize that he kind of gave away part of the game too because he admitted that we don't make a fuss as much or we don't push for things as much. We don't, we're unshackled by history. And he doesn't realize that that's an incentive to hire people too, you know, like, like, um, he said it's not because we're easygoing in terms of pay, you know, it's because we're so good. But he uh, revealed that we're not easygoing when it comes to talking about racism or real issues, you know. So, oh, someone said, who is she? She's a British actor who's on a TV show called The Good Fight. And she gets on American stuff as, as, as well, too. So she keeps going, Chris, Chris Jumbo. I would like nothing more than to be working on television and in film in this country. Um, she said she stuck out like a sore thumb on the set of Vera, you know, which is a British show she was on. I was the only person of, uh, of color. And she said Britain was pulling the plug on his talent. So she's basically saying, Britain, you have so much better talent of black people than in America, and you're wasting, you're missing out. America's good enough to realize. Uh, how much better we are. Why can't you realize it? So Britain's not letting them out because they're so racist or backwards or whatever. It's because they just aren't, uh, uh, they're just missing out on a good thing. You know, uh, they're just missing out on a good thing or it's a matter of talent recognition. And she gets so much work over there, not because black Americans who are as equally or more talented than her and have paved the way, like she could be using that as an incentive to f do that same fight over there, but she's not really fighting them. She's kind of begging and also negating the amount of fighting that black Americans have did and negating their, their talent. This is just messed up um, on, on, a bunch, on a bunch of level. And she goes, she told labor MPs, Gloria DiPiero and Tracy Braben, I didn't go to America. I didn't run to America. I didn't even ask for America. I just took a plane there and suddenly everyone was telling me, you're so talented. Would you like 52 jobs? And it's like, well, maybe there's gas in your head, you know, or whatever. Or maybe they're just um, 
otherizing you because you're not black American and black Americans have a lot of stigma around them because there have been a lot of studies that show that uh, white American people tend to prefer uh, foreign born black people, foreign descended black people. Um, that's been a um, discussion. Um, like, I'll, here's, here's an interesting, here's an interesting um, story and it's not, it's not that um, it's not that hold on. Anu Kwali's mother once gave a, gave an interview where um, she was talking about let me see let me see if I can find it. Uh, I can't find it right now, but she was talking about how she tried to get her kids into like a good school and the white people in charge of the school uh, said, you know, we're hoping that she was of Haitian descent because, you know, they preferred black people like that. You know, it was, it was, it was an interesting interview where they kind of like um, foreign born black families because they felt like they were more easygoing. And I found that really, I found that really, really interesting. Um, but when she, when she said that, and this, there's been other things where uh, they've done studies and stuff and surveys, and there's this kind of thing where people kind of project a lot of extra good stuff on foreign-born black people. They get more, more, yeah, someone said they feel less guilty, they feel um, around foreign-born blacks less obligated, but yeah, there's also this idea that they're just so much better, that their accents are so amazing, and I really don't see it. I just really don't see um, these accents these American accents being so exemplary. A lot of times the accents slip like crazy. Like I said with Queen and Slim, I don't want to harp on, I don't want to harp on Idris Elba too much because Idris Elba, I've never seen do that out of pocket stuff that um, these other people do. But what I'm talking about is if, if, if um, this guy really cared so much, um, what's his name? Let me draw a blank on his name. Um, Star Wars guy, I always, I always forget his name. Uh, a Star Wars guy really cared so much about this divisive stuff. Why is he always quiet? And when I, when I saw him talking about the divisive stuff, I was, and he was engaging people and responding to them, I was tweeting them. Goes um, right now while you're on while you're on here responding to people. Um, what do you feel about what Chris Jumbo said? What do you feel about what? Um, Harewood said, which is actually, and their dialogue is in the scene that you're calling trash. Like, uh, this is your chance right now to call them out for being divisive. And he was like, you know, um, playing dumb or, or ignoring me. John Boyega, yeah, I forgot his name. Yeah, so it's, um, I mean, I want to put something, like, like Daniel Kaluuya, he's, he's an okay actor. He's an okay actor. I don't have a problem with him, but He's not exactly like dripping with, with charisma, you know, when I when I um, see, see him. And see him, he's not um, dripping with charisma a lot. And he's not incredibly, when I saw Queen and Slim, the accent wasn't um, incredible to me, you know? I was like, what is it, what is it with his, because I want to know why, why his, uh, accent was kind of so bad. So I looked up Dan Kaluuya accent to see what his accent training was for um, doing that American accent in Queen and Slim. And this is this is what it said. It said, Daniel Kaluuya went to Costco to perfect his Ohio accent for Queen and Slim. And Daniel Kaluuya learned everything he needed to know about Ohio by going to Costco. So he went to Late Night with Stephen Colbert he said, Slim works at Costco. So I found the Costco that he was at. I just kind of hung out and I spoke to the staff and they showed me a couple of hoods and areas that Slim would be from. So he was just like, uh, he hung on Costco and talked to some people. And he was like, uh, hey guys, where's the, where's the hood? And then um, uh, so then he said, I found out that if you work at Costco on a Sunday, you, ate, you earn $38 an hour, Kalua continued. So I was like, oh, Slim will think he's a catch, so he's going to go into this date thinking I'm a great catch. Like, of course you're going to be on Tinder. He's the Sunday Costco guy. 
and then he did some other interviews where he said he just like um went to the hood and visited the barbershop and i'm like okay this is the great uh training that uh these people keep bragging about um oh i didn't even i didn't even notice he was dismissive of doing research okay and and this one had my own stuff i was so better trained and stuff and it's like okay these black american actors are just as trained they go to um they go to Juilliard and Yale and Harvard. Um, I think, um, yeah, yeah, whatever. Like the guy who played Bubbles on the Wire went, went to Harvard, you know. So yeah, and he also said this. I forgot about this one. A couple of months ago, he said, "I'm bored with racism." I believe was that him? That, that wasn't him actually. I think bored with racism was Daniel Kaluuya. Uh, but, but let me let me double check. I think Daniel Kaluuya said he was bored. Yeah, to be fair, it was Daniel Kaluuya that said that. Um, this is what it actually is. But Daniel Kaluuya said, I'm bored of talking about race. I'm not defined by it. So this kind of lends um, credence to what uh, Harewood was saying when when Harewood when Harewood said that uh, you know we're unshackled or unburdened by history, what's on the page, or we just play what's on. So you know, Kaluuya um, Harewood is saying, oh, we just play what's on the page. We we don't just ape out, you know, or act whatever we can read, you know. And then uh, Chris Jumbo is like, yeah, we learned our lines, you know, and then. Um, and then, um, and this kind of lends credence to that. You know, that Daniel Kaluuya has said he is bored of talking about race and racial issues. He doesn't want to be defined by his race or how it relates to his work. I'm not going to be to ignore that I'm surrounded by racial issues, but I'm not defined by it, the 30-year-old said. I'm just Daniel, who happens to be black, you know? And you did movies like Get Out, where your whole come up was movies uh, exploring your blackness and your race. So like, now that you're up, you're gonna like turn turn that down, you know? But then this is what annoys me on the other hand about um, John Boyega coming out and saying, yeah, don't get it twisted. I'm not one of these Hollywood uh, black people, you know, uh, don't get it twisted. Uh, I'm from London, I never left, you know? And it's like, okay, all your London peers are obviously saying, hey, we couldn't cut it here. And instead of like fighting back or forming on on production things, we all ran through America, you know, where you guys did all the fighting for us. And we're not gonna give you credit for that. We're just gonna say it's, and, and the most fighting that I've seen any of them do is uh, beg a bunch of um, white liberals in a room, you know, please recognize how good we are. The Americans recognize how good we are. Like, shut up, like, come on, you know? And this is it too, but, this is what back. See, this is another thing. They don't really know how white Americans are, and white Americans are good at gassing black people who think there are social, there's, there's special snowflakes. And a lot of black people in America fall for this. You know, a lot of black people fall for, oh, hey, Leroy, you're better than the other ne Negroes. You know, why can't everyone be like you, Leroy? You know, and and they really like fall for that. But it's harder and harder to find even high up black American people. Who still fall for that hustle and these guys are just new to the hustle it's like running an old line or an old game that everyone where you're from knows as a line but you know you find out with exchange students you know this line is getting you laid you know and and you know you're not even enough to fall for it and stop bashing american women you know um when really they, they just think you're easy you know so yeah, this is exactly right. They're gassing these black English actors by saying they are better trained, and and not not only is it cheaper, even if it's not cheaper, they at least think it's less stressful or whatever. You know, like same with that. So yeah, the whole thing about not from London, like like being from London as opposed to Hollywood makes you way more likely to fight when all your people are basically saying they don't want to fight and they came in with, with a work is better because other people fought but they won't admit it's because other people fought instead they're framing it as you know begging to white liberals in a room like Chris jumbo did and saying it's about hey these people see we're special why can't you see we're special like it's 
it's bullshit. And and when they come here talking about how okay, uh, I came up on race, but now I don't want to talk about it. You know. So yeah, I'm not giving Dan Kaluuya that much. I'm sorry, not Dan Kaluuya, John Boyega that much credit yet. He hasn't. Um, he hasn't showed me um, that he's changed that much. He still thinks to me he's a special soul, snowflake. Uh, someone in the chat said, "Oh, he's just shouting out where he's from." And that's what I'm saying. Like us in America, we have to stop giving people this benefit of the doubt for nothing. Like when people tell you who they are, like Maya Angelou says, believe them. Like his past history shows me enough that I don't have to create counter evidence to gaslight myself into uh, believing something that's not supported by the evidence. He's shown who he is over and over. And why did he have to shout out where he's from? Why can't you just say I'm black? You know, I'm black and and we don't play that or, you know, whatever. Um, no, he said like, oh, I, I'm African, you know, I'm from London, Britain, you know, like, like the same, like, get, get out of here. I, I, I don't, uh, you know, and 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 I, I, I just, I just want to show, I just want to show, show some, some things where I just think he's so full, so full of it personally. And I had started giving him the benefit of the doubt, and I should have went with my gut. And I regret even walking any of it back yesterday, right? But um, I'm going to pull up some of that stuff. So, here we go. He, um, he is here talking to Sam Jackson. Right here, he says, um, John Boyega criticizes Samuel Jackson over black British actor comments, March 2007, right? And he only just got here, so I don't know why, why he's even weighing in on this. And and a lot of the white media is really elevating this because you know they kind of like when their uh, special, their special snowflake black people criticize the native black people. And the reason why the white media really loved this quote, and why I think it was tacky for making this quote in white spaces. He should have gone to Sam Jackson and talked to him, or kept it in the black press or whatever, you know. But it, it's all over the white media and stuff, and on, on social media because um, when when there's special snowflake black people, especially foreign black people, come here and make it good, and then say it's about my talent, then they can go around and say, "See, Leroy." Uh, he can do it. Why can't you? Maybe it's not about race, you know? Why can't you be, like, um, this guy, you know? He just, he just got here. I'm, I'm, so I'm not racist, you know? So, so that's why they kind of they like this stuff, because it kind of gaslights Black Americans, and they and that's why they do it for it, too. They, they do it for that reason. They, they know what they're doing, right? So, so um, what what British actor Boyega hit back at Jackson on Twitter, you know, not not one on one, not in anything, but on Twitter. Black Brits versus African American. A stupid ass conflict we don't have time for. And I'm like, don't talk to him out of pocket like that, like a stupid ass. Like, even if you disagree with him, talk to that man with some kind of respect, you know? Don't like this guy paved the way for you to even work here. But they, they kind of think they can just leapfrog over the black American people that are here and just go to their managers and their bosses. And you know, as long as the white people like them, they don't care because those are the ones who are going to hire them. So they don't feel like they even have to play nice with the uh, um, African-American actors. They feel like they're the build the ball. But now 
look a couple years later when he makes his way and he starts getting some uh, clout and stuff. Now look what now look what he is. Um, April two thousand eighteen, John Boyega, Hollywood is now ready to tell African stories. He doesn't come back. He doesn't come back and say, "Hey, now Hollywood's ready to tell black stories." He didn't say, "Hey, this um, black Brit versus African versus." African-American division is too stupid uh, that no one has time for. Now he has time for the division. Uh, conveniently, when it's time to make some money and build his own name. So, you know, um, British Nigerian actor John Boyega has said, the success of the Black Panther movie means Hollywood wants to produce more African stories. So he took an American uh, movie, you know, um, that was made in America because um, with a lot of American actors, uh, including British and African actors, uh, um, as a pivot to make more African stories, right? And he goes, because of the success of Black Panther, now Hollywood wants African stories, and I think Nigeria is at the forefront of that, he said during a recent Lagos visit. So he's not only pinpointing... Um, Africa, but Nigeria especially, they are ready to see all these epic stories that we have in Nigeria, you know? And uh, so, yeah, you know? And, and then what did they put in the same article? And it's very interesting. It said, not everyone in Hollywood is optimistic that the success of Black Panther will translate to more Black stories being told. Marvel star Samuel L. Jackson, and note they bring him out again as a contrast, has said that he doesn't think it will change Hollywood's thinking. I'm not positive that Black Panther is going to change the dynamic of Black stories being told in Hollywood and being accepted all over the world, he said in an interview with Vogue Arabia. And that's kind of like what I'm talking about. You see how uh, this is an African publication, but you know they still kind of share the same narrative as the white publications. Like The African guy is going to bootstrap himself and be positive, but that pesky African American, he's still um, poo pooing everything and still agitating. He can't be happy with Black Panther. Nope, there he there he goes again. And like, why even have to bring up um, Sam Jackson and his opposite opinion about how dire racism makes it look for African actors? You know, except to contrast it against. Um, Daniel, I'm sorry, John Bo John Boyega, you know, um, yeah, but he's he's said different things um, about that too. So this isn't this isn't variety. This isn't variety. Uh, Star Wars actor John Boyega sets Netflix deal. Star Wars actor John Boyega is partnering with Netflix through his Upper Room production shingle to produce non-English language films centered on West and East Africa. Now, what I want to know is, is he going to hire Black American actors to be in the cast alongside the African actors, right? Because if he's saying it's okay for non-American people to um, play black Americans and that black Americans shouldn't be agitating to tell their own stories. It's a stupid ass conflict we don't have time for and you're trash, these are his words. If you talk about this stuff, then he should put his money where his mouth is and put a substantial amount of black American actors. Uh, you know, and show you believe in their talent. You believe they can learn an African or whatever accent the same way uh, you think you're qualified to speak um, I mean, I want you to think about this, right? Daisy Ridley is in Star Wars with a British accent. Why is John Boyega playing Finn? Why is he not playing Finn with a British accent? Think about that for a second. <laughs> you know, think, 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 think about that. Like, this shows how much you're riding on the wave of the idea of black American swag or black American culture, like these people don't really want to see you. They don't really care. Like they could make him, um, they could make friend with a black British accent. Somebody, it, one of two things happened. Either 
somebody from up high said, no, uh, we want you to use an American accent. And we want Daisy Ridley to use a British one. Or you took it upon yourself to use an American accent, in which case I'm wondering, why did you do that? Why didn't you go in with your um, American accent? See, this is when he said his British accent wouldn't sound right. But why wouldn't it sound right? Why does Daisy Ridley's accent sound any more right? You know, he's, he's Mr. I'm from London, you know? Um, all, all, this, all this London Bridgman talk, you know? Like, why, why does it not sound right? He, he said he's not Hollywood, you know? I'm African, I'm from London, but he kind of knows that people don't really want to pay to see that. You know, um, when it comes to like soft culture in the diaspora, honestly, African-Americans have the most powerful soft culture around, you know? And then if J.J. Abrams wanted to use an American accent, if that's what it was, because I'm hearing conflicting stories. Uh, some people are saying that, um, you know, he says British accent wouldn't sound right, but either way, I think it helps my point. Either the white people weren't trying to hear his, like for all your, all the supposed better training you have and how much better and learn your lines, um, white people really want to hear or be around or are captivated with the swag or the aura of American black people. They just don't want the flip side. You know, you know Chris Rock said everyone wants to be black, but, um, Nobody wants to be back. Like, yeah. So, whew, I don't know. I mean, but going back to this, and he says, um, the company said on Tuesday that the indie production house founded by the British Nigerian Thespian will develop film projects based on stories, characters, crew, literary properties, mythology, screenplays, and or other elements in and around African countries. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I'm going through this thing and suddenly like the divisiveness is totally, um, fine. And he said, I am thrilled to partner with Netflix to develop a state of non-English language feature films based on African stories. And yeah, so, I mean, what, whatever, I'm not. For all the above, I'm not that enthused about what John Boyega said. This wasn't, um, oh, someone said John Boyega. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Paul Mooney did coin that, but um, uh, Chris Rock did do a riff on it, you know, where, where he was talking about how, um, you know, uh, nobody wants to be me and I'm rich, you know, and, and stuff like that. Like, I'm rich and none of you will, will even trade places with me. Yeah, so. This wasn't what I originally meant to talk about today. I actually think I put something different in the description. I'll have to change the description to reflect that. But yeah, I mean, this is the encouraging start. But I mean, I mean, you you guys tell me. I'm, I'm going to end it. But you guys tell me, what do you think about the case that I laid out? Uh, looking back at what Boyega said, given the context that I added to it, like, am I being too hard on him? I'm I'm open to hear. Like, I'm going to stick to my guns on it, but I am open to hear um, the other side be before we go. I'll, I'll just put some comments up on the screen based on, on what you say, you know. But Maybe to help. Sorry, I'm just too hungry. Let's replay it, you know, and then see what you guys think. And it's like, you know, I'm glad you said it. And I'm glad you said it in response to um, George Floyd, you know, and it's a step in the right direction. But I just don't want people to just overdo it, which is what I feel is um, starting to happen. So here we go. Mm, for some reason, I'm not hearing sound. Hold on. Okay, here we go. I think the sounds now. Hmm. Are y'all hearing sound? I'm not hearing sound. That's straight up block. It's fine. It's here we go. Don't need you on my page. And if you're a fan of me and you support my work and you're racist and you're arguing with what I was saying, fuck off, you fucking dickhead.
Yeah, I think it's freezing. I wanted to... Hmm. I want to play it one more time to get people's take, but I think it's freezing. Let's see. We'll try it one more time. We're going to try it one more time and see what people say. That's straight up block. It's fine. It's ready. Don't need you on my page. And if you're a fan of me and you support my work and you're racist and you're arguing with what I was saying, fuck off. You fucking dickheads. Yeah? So I straight up like that. That's how it's going to go. And throughout my whole career as an actor, I want to let you guys know this. I'm not the guy. I'm not Hollywood. I never, ever left the UK to go and live in LA for over a year. I never did. I'm from London. I'm from here. We have different fucking rules. We're real. We speak truth. Where are, where are, where are emotions on the wrist? I'm yeah, we speak truth. So I guess they don't in America. I don't know. So African. So stop taking a piss with any racist shit that's straight up block. It's fine. It's ready. Don't need you on my page. And if you're a fan of me. And I'm also African. I don't know. I'm, I'm not. I'm not really beyond that. I, I don't know. Um, was this sound the last time? Because before it was frozen, the sound wasn't coming on. Yeah, banging his UK set at the end. Like, you know. I wouldn't even mind if he did that, if he showed more solidarity with the American. Like, I have no problem with him saying where he's from or whatever. But in light of the whole overall context and arc of his career and his public statements, you know, it's... um. <laughs> Terry Hines is killing me right now. Um, yeah, I don't know. But that's just what I wanted to talk about. It, it just kind of annoyed me. And I'll talk about the original topic, which was about um, what was happening in Minnesota and George Floyd and the riots and the concern trolls and stuff um, in, tomorrow's, in tomorrow's post. Maybe if time permits, I might come back on here tonight and talk about it then. But that was the last thing I saw, and it, and it sidetracked me from what I originally wanted to talk about. So anyway, thanks, y'all. Take care. Uh, make sure to hit like on the way out. We have 50 people in here right now. There's no reason why we shouldn't have 50 likes. And don't forget to share, to share, comment, subscribe, and go to patreon.com forward slash champagne sharks to become a patron and get all those goodies. All right? Take care, everybody. Everybody be good.